I'm in the redwood forest among these giant trees, call them giant redwoods or giant sequoias is what they're called, just off the coast of Northern California. We just crossed the border from Oregon into California. And you'll notice all these understory species. We've got ferns, uh, lots of species that depend on the bigger trees uh, to get them the water they need. Uh, but what I wanted to show you right now is these sunspots, these sun flecks in the understory. You'll notice most of the understory is shaded out. Big canopies absorb most of the sunlight. Uh, but up here, what we can see are examples of sun flecks. And this is where just a brief amount of time each day, maybe one or two minutes, you'll just get an opening in the canopy where a fern like this will get full sunlight for, I guess, could be a minute, could be five minutes. And then the sun will pass over, the, over that canopy gap and it will disappear. And this may be 80% of the light that this plant, get, plant gets over the course of the day. And the rest of the day it will be shaded out. And that shade will represent a very small fraction of the total light it will get. And this full sunlight that it gets for just a few minutes may be uh, most of the light that it gets. And so, the plant has to anticipate that the, the sun flecked is, is gonna arrive. And right now it's 3.18 in the afternoon. So this plant will have to use its circadian rhythm, uh, its molecular clock, to tell it what time of day it is so that the leaves, their physiological activity is increased prior to the arrival of the full sunlight. So it's ready to capture that sunlight and uh, run really high rates of photosynthesis to fix carbon that it will need to grow. You see this plant is shaded out. I don't know what time of day this one gets its sun fleck or even if it does, but these sun flecks are really important uh, for these understory plants and they really have to have their timing right to be able to take advantage of the sun flecks.